<laughs> you know what you should do for SEO purposes when people are looking for websites? Make up a word that every single search engine will autocorrect, and even when it doesn't, <laughs> nobody will ever find That's the true. Beatitudes. Like it's, <laughs> it's just impossible. Either you know well, us you or mean you the don't. Beatitudes instead. <laughs> yeah. Here's all those results. And then you're like, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. That's what Google <laughs> says. Like, come on, man. Nobody yeah. actually means that. We didn't really approach it from that angle. <laughs> no. no, we just were like, that sounds good. Did yeah, you, we have Google some microphones. It? Did you Google it to see if there was other? Oh, yeah. We already have, just so you know, if you're listening, we already have a whole legal team that is cornering this word. So <laughs> good luck. <laughs> no, I, I am not it. joking in any way. <laughs> but we're going to laugh through it. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Howdy, Beatitudes. Welcome to the show. We are so pumped to have you here. My name is Jeff Shufflebine. I'm joined by my co-host, Nick Besner. What's going on? And Paul Kolker. Hello. And we're going to have an awesome show here on the Beatitudes today. This show is a show for Christian men seeking to grow in humor and holiness as they're chasing God's will in their life. Like, how can we live God's will better? But there's a whole lot of vulnerability in here to prove that we're all kind of in this broken state trying to grow into who we're called to be, right? Amen. Well, I did some reflecting, and I just want to share this with the guys. <laughs> um, nice, I, if, nice transition. If you listened to one of our shows, and we'll bring on our guest here in a second. He's sitting there touching y'all's legs uh, with his legs. Um, because that, nope. of how awkwardly close we're all crammed in here. <laughs> just like to be a, clear. It's the undersized table. <laughs> this is yeah, a, I think this is actually a kindergarten half table. That's it. <laughs> It's a good yeah. place for a men's podcast. <laughs> right. it, it feels like we're in coach on an airplane. <laughs> spirit. Yes, yeah, spirit, spirit Airlines. airlines. Well, Holy Spirit Airlines. Dang. We're very, we're doing this in humbleness. So I was uh, kind of looking around at our old episodes. And if anybody caught this episode where we talked about our favorite words, there was a lot of talk around the penultimate. Okay. And <laughs> I actually, I wanted to bring this back up. This is really critical to this idea of our formation. Just okay. stay with me here. Okay. In... Evangelium Vitae, <laughs> JP2, goes to this whole part about the incomparable worth of the human person. Yes. I'm going to read you paragraph two of this section. At the same time, it is precisely this supernatural calling which highlights the relative character of each individual's earthly life. After all, life on earth is not an ultimate, but a penultimate <laughs> reality. <laughs> your favorite pope? <laughs> This is amazing. Use your favorite word. <laughs> so, wait, did you just Google like Catholic Church plus penultimate? Did no. you try to find something to justify your use? No, of that I word? did not. I <laughs> sit around thinking about penultimate things all the time, and then it dawns on me: life. Oh, wait, I read this on seven Earth, years ago. Yeah, life on Earth is the penultimate life. Oh, nice. Yeah, that, that is good. I, I mean, it. you want to make fun of me or JP two? What do you think you're doing right now? Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, like, yeah, that's no making fun. <laughs> yeah, we don't make fun of him. We're just poking. Okay, fair enough. Well, uh, I don't have a transition off of that one, but uh, I am so glad to welcome John Heinen to the show. John, welcome. How are yeah, you? I'm great. Honored to be here. Oh my goodness, uh, you. We should be honored to have you because when I think about what we're doing, trying to get Catholic Christian men to grow in holiness and in their manhood, you're like. The champion of all of I this, do. right? That's what, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I try to do. <laughs> yeah, you're just being nice showing up at the Beatitudes. No, I love it. I'm glad to be here. Man, so tell us, um, first of all, just a little bit about you, and then we'll dive into the different groups that you're a part of. Yeah, awesome. So John Heinen, um, born and raised Catholic. I am married uh, for almost 14 years. Social security number? <clears throat> Going to reverse that? No. 13 years. <laughs> 13 years. And, uh, and it feels like 14. And, uh, in a good way. <laughs> in a great way. In a great way. She's the best thing in my life, without a doubt. So I have six kids with me, yep, seven yep, yep. kids already entrusted in the love and mercy of God. So I appreciate a prayer. My wife is pregnant right now and uh, with number six. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Awesome. You great. count on the Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And when's the, when's the potential? Uh, November. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody will join us in praying for a healthy yeah, pregnancy. Do. Yes, thank absolutely. You. Absolutely. Cool. So um, you got like two big banners next to you. One is this marketing group. This other is this gigantic men's movement. Let's start with the marketing movement. And then that way we can build up to this thing that we're all trying to be here on the Beatitudes. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, real blessed to work for a group called Fuzati. Uh, so Fuzati is a marketing website technology design firm. And uh, we got about 40 full-time employees. And we work with a lot of great uh, Catholic 
clients, including one of your sponsors. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's been a real blessing. I've been there for seven years, just over seven years, and am vice president of that company. And they're amazing people to work for and amazing clients to have. So I might know this. Maybe I don't. What is Fuzati? Uh, <laughs> you probably don't. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> Fuzati <laughs> is just a play on fusion and technology and information. It was one of those, we need a six domain, you know, oh. back in the 10 decade ago, it was like, oh, you need these six domain, um, you know, six letter domains and, and those are the best. And so, you know, and Ryan Delacrosse, the owner is Italian. And so he loved this idea. We were playing with fusion technology information, blah, blah, blah. And Fuzzati it's actually really cool. Yeah, yeah, Blessed Pierre yeah. Giorgio Fuzzati. <laughs> That's close. Exactly. My That's brain was like, line. did they mix up that name? And it's like <laughs> they're going hiking up a mountain. Like, I'm, I don't know a lot so about it. It's it, a Fugazi. It, you know, it's a Fuzzati. Exactly. Fuzzati. It happens all the time. It happened with a nun uh, not too long ago. And I like didn't have the heart to like correct her. And I was just oh, like, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessed Pierre. I love him too. Yeah, we're on the same thing. <laughs> yeah, we just made up a word. <laughs> no, exactly. You know what you should do for SEO purposes when people are looking for websites? Make up a word that every single search engine will autocorrect, and even when it doesn't, <laughs> nobody will ever find That's the true. Beatitudes. Like it's, <laughs> it's just impossible. Either you know well, us you or you the don't. Beatitudes instead. <laughs> yeah. Here's all those results. And then you're like, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. That's what Google says. Like, come on, man. Nobody yeah. actually means that. We didn't really approach it from that angle. <laughs> no. no, we just were like, that sounds good. Did yeah, you, we have some Google microphones. It? Did you Google it to see if there was other? Oh, yeah. We already have, just so you know, if you're listening, we already have a whole legal team that is cornering this word. So (laughs) good luck. (laughs) I I am not joking in any way. (laughs) But we're going to laugh through it. (laughs) Gotcha. (laughs) Okay. So, Fuzati, and you are? Vice president. Okay. Like, what does that entail? So, um, I manage kind of the website marketing side of things. Uh, technology is managed uh, elsewhere. And then Fuzati owns a couple of our own properties and we manage those as well. So I report to the two owners above me and I manage the team and I also manage a lot of the clients too. What do you so, mean properties? Uh, so Fuzati owns like everything Catholic, which is kind of like an, an Amazon in the clouds. So oh, like a Catholic digital brand. property. Yeah, There's exactly. not like some rental house. No, 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 no. <laughs> Little John, John, the app. toilet's leaking. <laughs> we have an Airbnb in Pensacola, Florida. That's right down Galveston. Um, <laughs> So, awesome. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, so different uh, digital properties and the app and things like that. So if so. I said, hey, I need help with my business, what can you do to help? <laughs> I know, I still, this is how we said, approach business. You said marketing, technology, design. It was a lot yeah, of words. Yeah, it was a lot of words. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, well, what does that help mean? Me. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, and we should get one Explain of our like I'm five. Yeah, basically, uh, so a client will come to us and they'll say, hi, I have X amount of dollars of revenue a year. I'd like to get it to X. And so then we will literally go through a whole business strategy with them. We'll talk about the whole marketing aspect of it. We'll do a full deep audit into their website, their email marketing, their social media pages, et cetera. And then we'll figure out what the best strategy for it is for them. And then we will implement it and do it for them. I know somebody that you should meet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, am, I am that person. Uh, no, great. I yeah. am. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'm John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay, so that is Fuzati, the not saint. Um, That's right. Combo word marketing firm mm. with properties That's in the cloud. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. I should come Heaven, on and do Heaven, your marketing. Heavenly properties. Yes. Hey. hey, now. Right. I, and I love that you said we own everything Catholic. And I was like, wait, yeah. is that everything Catholic. <laughs> That's, com, that's or? the goal. Like, I'll be reaching out to you guys to own this later. Oh, um, all right. <laughs> I think you already do the way you just described this. <laughs> he does. Yep. I believe it. All right, speaking of Catholic, your other big piece is what? Tell us about your your movement here. Yeah, so owner and director of the Catholic Gentleman. So the Catholic Gentleman is a men's movement uh, really geared towards helping men appreciate their masculinity and grow in holiness, right? So be a man, be a saint. That's kind of our motto. And we really stick to that. A decade ago, there was literally a decade in July is going to be our 10th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. And so... We saw all these great groups, you know, Art of Manliness, Brett McKay, and these different guys were coming out with a lot of these different um, masculine-focused things. And, you know, we have a heart for it. We have this uh, archetype within us. We want to be a provider, a protector, an adventurer, et cetera. And all these guys were doing a great job hitting all those points, but kind of on a subjective, you know, reality, right? So basically, a Catholic gentleman came in, we threw some holy water on it, and I <laughs> tried to do a balance. So we've expanded, obviously, with our social media followings, our blog pages, our podcast, and we're coming out with a membership program in a few weeks. So. No, nothing wrong with baptizing good things That's that you right. find Amen. in the culture. Good. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, out of all those things that the Catholic gentle, 
Men or general man? Man, man, man let's singular. be clear. It's yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a picture of John Heinen. We are Heinen. all Catholic gentle <laughs> man. mans. <laughs> mans. How many gentlemen are here tonight? Uh, so in the Catholic gentleman. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. You're making it awkward. <laughs> I make everything so that awkward. You, I mean, a uh, hundred times I've had to backspace yeah. A okay. and instead of E. And so, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Out of yeah. all of those different... Uh, Everything that you own within that world, what is your favorite thing to work on or, or that you think is maybe having the biggest push, the biggest movement? Great, the podcast. Yeah, right yeah. now it's the podcast. And that's why we're leaning into the membership program for it. I actually got a text today from a lady who was Catholic for 10 years trying to convert her husband. She said unaware to her uh, six months ago or so, she her husband started listening to the podcast and just entered, uh, wants to enter into RCIA. Wow, that's she, awesome. Through People that know her, she found That's a way of awesome. talking yeah. to me. Yeah, th- right? I know God uses us, Amen. right? That's instrument to his grace. Amen. Man. So. Well, you know, speaking of God using us, I was having breakfast with you, I don't know, a month yeah. ago, and you were like, you know who you should interview? Brett Atterbury. And I'm <laughs> like, well, he's coming on the show. Well, Brett came up here and did a show with us, and he goes, you know you should interview John Hine. And I'm like, he's <laughs> our next show. Like, right. <laughs> awesome. So I feel like a lot of God winks leading up to Amen. all of these amazing guests, and we are uh, we're grateful that you're here. Do you want to join? I want to get into the Catholic gentleman, but I actually want to start off. Maybe we could play an improv game yeah, with you. Does it sound like fun? Yeah. The game is called Blessed Are the Joke Makers, for they shall inherit the points. And uh, you can pick any number of points. You this get to judge, judge us. You judge us. Yeah, yeah exactly. see, you know the show. Yeah. yeah. What? So, <laughs> 33. 33. Right? 33. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Perfect. I, got, I got this, <laughs> baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? Okay, <laughs> Jeff. You, you gentleman. <laughs> Okay, so again, the way this works, we got a character card and uh, a card from the Catholic card game that we have to answer as this character. So, the character card is, as an aging beauty queen, wow, we're going to offend people. Here we go. As an aging beauty queen, Lord, no, 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 sorry, got to gotta scratch that card. I think this one's going in the trash. I literally just threw it away. <laughs> the 11th plague, blank. A famine of Ulta Beauty Care products. The eleventh plague <laughs> is when my Honda broke down. <laughs> the eleventh plague is that there's no more bonding agent for my dentures. <laughs> <laughs> this was painful. Was, uh, <laughs> By all of us. <laughs> John. It was some hefty competition. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm glad it was only I'm 30. That's a very gentlemanly give, thing to I'm say. I'm going to give uh, to Paul. I, oh, uh, I would too. I agree with you on that one completely. Uh, and I'm glad I wasn't. Hey, Paul, way to go on getting that. The Whoa, I got the Beatitudes sound effect. Thank man. you. That's yeah, good I, job. My, what? I'm not going to say it. Okay, I'm going to say it. You, I was going to say something about me. You, you basically <laughs> took mine. I had to, That's why there's speed <laughs> matters. Got, yeah, it does. All right, John, are you a fan of sacrilegious? Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully you don't have St. Thomas Aquinas yet I because do not. that's what you're getting today for being our celebrity judge. Sacrilegious.com slash Beatted Dudes for 10% off. And um, we're going to take a quick little break here from our sponsors. Be right back. Hey, y'all, this is Jeff Shufflebine. When Nick and I set out to start our new company, Undivided Life, we were really concerned about how would we cover the healthcare needs of our growing families. And we were so excited to find a company that fit both our medical needs and our faith beliefs perfectly. It's called Solidarity HealthShare. It is an ethical alternative to traditional health insurance. We're never part of sharing in the medical costs of anything that goes against the teachings of the Catholic Church, making it a great alternative for Catholics and Christians alike. Solidarity is very affordable, which is perfect for a large family or for a new and growing business like the one we've started. So visit joinsolidarity.com today so that you can get started with us. Let me tell you about Decided Excellence Magazine. Decided Excellence is a great resource reaching thousands of families in your local community. They've got original content featuring local families and notable theologians like Scott Hahn. If you're looking to grow in a specific way, they can be a great partner for that as well. They partner with thousands of parishes creating parish magazines, 
If you're a business owner, Decided Excellence can be a great way to advertise to homeowners right there in your backyard. And if you're looking to earn a little bit of extra income, Decided Excellence has a partnership program where you can become the owner and publisher of your local magazine. So partner with Decided Excellence and begin growing together today. Hi, it's Paul Kolker from the Beatitudes here, and I just wanted to share with you guys that I also, outside of the show, perform improv comedy on a regular basis with a group called Divine Comedy. So what we do is we come up with everything on the spot, so whether you're looking for faith-filled, fun, family-friendly comedy for your youth night, or whether you're looking for clean comedy for your corporate event, Divine Comedy can perform for your group and even get you in on the action. So if you'd like to hire us to come out and perform for your next event, check out Divine Comedy Improv. Com. Divine Comedy, an inferno of fun. Welcome back, everybody. We're sitting here with John Heinen of The Catholic Gentleman. And uh, we were talking there during break, Paul. You, you had something that, uh, that yeah. caught, your, caught your attention. Well, so I had looked up uh, catholicgentleman.com. That's gentleman, not gentleman.com. Um and uh, you, your latest article was the six essential rules every Catholic man should live by. So I love this because you're laying out some really like hard hitting stuff here. And I just wanted to jump ahead. You've got one down here that um, I will struggle for virtue and to overcome myself. Right, like the, one of the other ones is I will learn to pray as if my eternal salvation depends on it. And then number number five down here, I will prefer the Beatitudes to the world's values. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's why you're here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's fantastic. No, but really, th this is a great article. I read through it earlier, and it's just, it's some hard-hitting stuff, right? Because we don't, we, I, we might tend sometimes to sugarcoat things and maybe say, oh, well, God's mercy. And, and it's not that we want to presume on those things, but we maybe overemphasize it and say, well, I need to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, I, uh, I don't want to get too... Theological, but that's six things. We can break it down to three. You can uh, get theological. Yeah. yeah, go for it. We can break it down to three things, right? So St. Augustine said at the fall of man, three things were ruptured, right? Our relationship with God, our relationship with others, and our relationship internally. He actually said a fourth thing, our relationship with nature and creation. But mm. um, for this purpose, you can really focus on those three things, right? So manliness is living all the virtues in harmony. But why do we live all the virtues in harmony? So that we can live for others, that we can live in service, and we can follow God's will. All things going back to God and following his will for our lives. And so six things here, seven things there. It's really all just different ways of breaking down sure. those three things that we're trying to unify it's, as men. It gets you to click. Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> well, you're, you're in marketing. marketing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, But we need to simplify it for men, right? Like, we're, especially in today's world, noise is so everywhere. And we all have, you know... Twitter, 140 character brains, uh, you know, that we're trying to wrestle with. And so um, I, I break it down to those three things because as you're focusing on those three things as a man, you're growing in holiness. You're growing in, in appreciation of your masculinity, in control of your passions and desires, and being the man for others that God created you to be. Well, and I just saw, um, this is just so timely, I, I think it was a Wall Street Journal or uh, some other publication just came out with it. it was a survey that they did in 1998 and a couple times since and uh, just published. And it was like, what does America value? It's like mm. survey of thousands of people. And it's like hard work way down, family way down, mm. community way down, having children way down. The only thing that was up money. Oh yeah. Wow. It's just like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Sad. Yeah, yeah. Some of the and, and you, you, we, well, we always have this like, Oh, we want to pursue happiness, right? It's in the constitution. It's a merit. It's like you want to pursue the pursuit of happiness, but you actually find it elsewhere. That's right. <laughs> right? Well, and I think our founding fathers would have understood happiness to mean a virtuous life because a lot of them were classically educated. Mm -hmm. So that whole idea of that you control yourself and then pursue these higher things. And that's the happiness. It's not just a feeling. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, virtue is um, strength, right? Virtus is strength, and manliness is practicing all the virtues in harmony, even all the way back to Aristotle, like you were just saying. You know, you could go back to him and, you know, scholastics and earlier trained, and they all come back to these, this, this necessity, right? Because, and it was Dom Lorenzo Scopoli, Spiritual Combat, where he stated, you know, that basically the man who has given himself up to his passions or desires becomes a slave to those passions or desires. Mm. And therefore he can't give to other people what he does not own because he doesn't own himself anymore. He's given wow. himself in slavery 
to these passions and wow. desires. And that's what that pursuit of profit, power, pleasure, you know, that's what it leads to. And we become, we become addicts. I mean, we've all struggled with this, I'm sure. I mean, I've got my own addictions that I've struggled with and had to work through. Uh, but if you don't know where your path is or where you're trying to go, yeah, man, I just am so grateful we're Catholic. So grateful to be here with the Yetta dudes <laughs> and uh, to talk through these things because it really is. Uh, it's so purposeful. It's so, um, you know, holy and, and, and true pleasure, true happiness. So, yeah. So if I'm thinking about what you just said and you went into this book that I've never read about spiritual combat, yeah. there's people listening that that would intimidate them a lot. There's some people listening on headphones right now that are intimidated a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, just yes. kidding. <laughs> but when I think about the Catholic gentleman, can you describe who this is for? Like, mm. who's going to find their pathway and and how as they enter into this movement? Everyone, I am. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. That's so good. So, I am really big on holiness is not just for the Catholic influencers. Holiness is not just for the university professors. Holiness is not just for the grandparents. Right? Holiness is now. Holiness is in the present for us. For every single man listening to this. And so, when you start, yeah, I wouldn't encourage you if, if this is new to Dom Lorenzo Scupoli, though. He's very militant, right? So it's like two pages, bam, bam. You I know, know you're saying and, words in there, but it just sounds like you're throwing up. <laughs> Dumb, Dumbledore. Dumbledore. No. Dumbledore. Yeah. Did I hear Dumbledore? Dumbledore in there? wrote a great it's, book. About about he did, battle. He did. Put it in the show notes. Um, and so, um, but yeah, we are for all men. And that's what, you know, and I'm really big. There's every creek to Christ, right? Every creek to God and, and these these mm. rivers, these tributaries, right, that are leading into that primary um, or branches that are leading to that primary vein. And so, yeah, things like fasting or something, right? I'm, I'm a huge fan of fasting. But here's the thing. If fasting for you is skipping between, uh, sorry, not eating between lunch and dinner, that can be as meritorious as Anybody who's fasting a 24-hour fast yeah. or something like that, it can be as meritorious because God is meeting you where you're at. Story of the prodigal son, right? When the prodigal son returned, what did God the Father do? Did he stand up and wait for him? No. Did he stand up and walk to him? No. He stood up and run to him because God is hunting after us mm. far more than we are you know, looking for him. And so it's for all men. Uh, don't get overwhelmed. It is a struggle, right? We just have to get back up with holy stubbornness as Father, <laughs> uh, sorry, as St. Jose Maria Scriva states. And, Tell know. us the website right now while we're here. Yeah, this. catholicgentleman.com. Catholicgentleman.com. Can you talk about, as you're thinking of the, the call to manliness and, and really battling across all these places where we're broken, and we're on the Beatitudes. What role does humor play in all of this? Oh, yeah, for me, a lot. <laughs> so uh, you got to take yourself lightly, right? You've got to take, I mean, uh, I'm not a, against self-deprecation on a, <laughs> a daily basis. <laughs> Just to remind myself, right, that I feel all the time. I talk about my fasting and how I nibble around the edges or how I, I'll have a, a, you know, a, um, a spiritual director for 10 years before I finally start praying daily, you know, like 10 years telling me, can I pray daily? And, and th I mean, that's the struggle. And so you gotta, you gotta have fun with that. Cause if you don't, you're just going to fall into despair, right? You're going to, you're going to fall into, an, and that's it. God is not a calculating, exacting God. As, as, um, David said in scripture, uh, God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, right? That is our God at, at all times. And so we've got to take ourselves lightly. And I love I love laughing. I love humor. So, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't talk about anything outside of masculinity. And uh, <laughs> well, no. So I'm I'm curious too. Where do you find yourself with all of that? With that movement, kind of in the present moment, where it seems like things are really um, bifurcated, right? Where it's kind of like we're either gonna we're either gonna shame masculinity on mm. one side, or or we're just gonna lean into you know, uh, oh, well, just I'm going to muscle through it and, and not really acknowledge, you know, that I maybe have some some depth and emotion and those kinds of yeah. things. Yeah, well, that's a really good question. Um, might not answer it spot on, but... Oh, go um, for it. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, so I do think it's really important for men who are listening to, you know, be be real with themselves and where they're at. And so... I am so glad that you guys are doing this. I'm really big about we need to flood the marketplace with podcasts, right? It can't just be one podcast competing against another podcast. Yep. We need to raise the market, as they say. Mm. And we need to help men reach them where they're at because, yeah, like a lot of guys are, are coming and they're just, you know, a, a, um, alcohol addicts or whatever their addiction might be. Um, it, and, and we've got to meet them where they're at and we got to love them where they're at. And we've got to understand where they're at. And so... You know, for the Catholic gentlemen, one of the biggest things is is that we're creating this membership program to try and do just that, right? So maybe I've never prayed the litany of humility. If you do, I encourage you to. And I've met a lot of guys who have prayed it and prayed it and been like, oh, this is this is nice. 
I pray it, and it's like somebody's punching me right in the yeah. gut every time I oh, pray yeah. it. That, that's yeah. one that if you pray it, it will be answered very yeah, quickly. It's yeah, truth, it's right? a hard one. I prayed for it before I came here, so who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> um, and, oh, no, but seriously, though. Um, but I, I like that, though, because for some of us, Litany of Humility is phenomenal, and it's great. But for other people, it's just not resonating with them. It's not where they're at. And so if we stick to this black and white sort of regime um, of finding God, of reaching God, uh, we're going to fail. We're not going to reach the most amount of men, and we're going to be too legalistic, too pharisaical. And so I want to do the best we can within the limits of the digital space to yeah. uh, help with that. Well, so. and for those who might not know, um, pharisaical, Pharisees, right? Thank so you. the Pharisees were, were very legalistic, and so it had to be very much by the book. Oh, you're, you're breaking that commandment by healing somebody on the Sabbath is yeah. what they held against the Lord. And so it's like, well, hold on. The Sabbath is for our healing, ultimately, that rest that we're supposed to enter into. Yeah. Yeah. I think the way you're talking about this too is interesting because here we are trying to say that the Beatitudes doesn't need to be for everybody. It needs to be for somebody, right? As mm -hmm. long as somebody's being moved because the Holy Spirit's working through the show, then that's a win for, for God, right? Go team Jesus. Yeah, I know. But the idea that's, I think, changed over the, I don't know, last few years, I don't see the people in the Catholic Church, the thought leaders, operating from scarcity anymore. It's mm -hmm. an abundance. It's how can we promote each other's work? How can we make sure that people are finding the Catholic gentleman? If that's what they need, that how can they spread it to other people just like them? And uh, you're seeing this left and right with the podcast world. You're seeing it with yeah. uh, people that are just out there doing good product marketing. I mean, we talked about Sock Religious earlier. That's a company that operates with abundance and with partnership. And how do we bring all of this to the forefront so that we're sharpening and I would just say supporting and keeping each other accountable. Yeah. And so, I don't know, it, from your perspective, you get to see it on, on both sides, I suppose, between Fizzati Marketing and the Catholic Gentleman, the role of partnership and abundance. Yeah, so I'm very big on everything you just said, you know, with Soc Religious as well. I think it's it's phenomenal. We do see the other side of it, right? I mean, I think it's innate within our own selves, especially here in America, right? We've got this competitive nature where we've got to win. And, and that's hard. And I find that within myself, you know, you compare, you despair. I remind myself that all the time that's because that's, that's a really good line. That's where it leads me all the time. I look at I look at podcast episode numbers and one uh, comparing myself, right? One against the other and it's hundreds difference, but we're we're talking in the thousands and it's like this is silly and as you just said it's not a numbers game. It doesn't matter if one soul I was just giving a talk a couple weeks ago and um, the host came up and was like, "Hey, you know, I'm sorry only about 20 guys showed up." And I'm like, "Not at all. If it's one guy bad. was here, I'd be here." Like, I mean, yeah. that's the it's not a numbers game about the faith as as far as helping to save souls, but this idea of partnership within Catholic uh, organizations or ministries, I think is beautiful and I think it is expanding uh, more and more uh, to to hopefully help each other out and to, like I said, raise the market. So. I was on a board one time and I told somebody that I was going to make an introduction and another board member pulled me aside and said, don't do that because if they give to such and such group, they'll give less money mm -hmm. to us. And I said, I don't think you understand how this works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know how the people that give money mm. operate and they're not sitting here saying, oh, my X minus one because I just you just introduced me to so-and-so. It's their feel called to support and drive. And if you can work with that world of abundance, I think you can create real opportunity. That's the heart. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the St. Uh, Teresa. Uh, sorry, I, then I thought of all of the Teresas as soon as I said that. Not Avila. Um, uh, mother Teresa. Yes, mother. But I couldn't, I couldn't, what? Because you oh, got to start off with the word mother. Yeah, that would help. Uh, so Mother Teresa would say that God has lots of money, but it's in your pockets. Right? Nice. So, yeah. But there's the idea that we have to also give She's in all that. great with one she right? She's the holy zinger. Yeah, agree. <laughs> Speaking of holy zingers, you give a lot of talks. Tell me the most talks you've ever given in one day. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> uh, seven, uh, which Whoa, was too many. Yeah, uh, which was too many. It was way too many. I just, I looked at myself in the mirror and thought, man, I can do this. This is incredible. And then the day showed up and that was... It was <laughs> Did you I ever did, think you were going to faint? But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> how, was, how many Red Bulls did you? I know, right? Exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, coffee. No, it was, that was tough. That was tough. I will not do that again. What's your favorite <laughs> talks or, or to give favorite topics? I mean, right now, my favorite topic right now is our identity and God as sons of God. Yeah. Because I think we get God wrong. I think we see God the Father, and I've already mentioned it earlier, as like exacting and calculating and we in our good decisions against our bad decisions. And I think we don't realize that we are sons of a loving father. 
So we got to get God the Father right and then understand that we are his sons. And what does that mean? Like, so I found myself um, actually recently over the last six months, pretty much every day uh, praying oftentimes before the tabernacle or just in my room and just saying, you know, God, I'm your son. Help me understand what that means. I want to make you proud, you know, uh, because I understand that God is love and God is loving me. And so I, I've been yearning for that. And so I've, I've got a talk that I've been giving recently on our identity in our sonship in God, and yeah, I've been enjoying that. So self mastery is another one I like to talk about. But. Are you speaking in North Texas anytime soon? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, uh, see no, how this goes, yeah, right? Exactly right. <laughs> well, good. Um, and it, when people want to keep up with your speaking, is that can they find that through the CatholicGentleman dot com? Yeah, so not the live speaking engagements. Right now, no. we've been really focused on the podcast and the membership. And honestly, Sam and I are both so busy. Sam um, is the co host. Yeah, Sam is the co host. Exactly. Okay. So Sam was the original founder of the Catholic Gentleman, and then. Uh, we've been close friends forever and I've really taken it all over, but he, uh, he's uh, got a five kids himself, family health counselor. Um, and so he's so busy and, and like you guys, you guys are all so busy and, and that's kind of the same thing. So we just sit at this little stuff. table and talk all the time. Everyone's <laughs> holy press record. It's a tiny little. <laughs> but, but because the, we, we talk to a microphone, uh, it's business. It's right. yeah. <laughs> Every word out of my mouth is a write-off. Uh. <laughs> Put that That's on the board. Yeah. yeah, it is a good one. Oh, man. Well, we want to do a question with you that all four of us will end up answering from the TBD deck, the Beatted Dudes question okay. deck. And actually, you inspired this one, so thank okay. you for that. Okay. Um, it's not a difficult one, but uh, can go many places. So very simply, if you want to play along at home, find somebody and share this. I don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, think, I think you're pause. right. I think, oh, yeah, yeah, find, you know, the next person you're in a conversation with and ask them this. Like, just get it, to it, the next level. It, yeah. Well, and I would say skip all of the hellos. Just go straight into this question. What yeah. you, <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what you would do, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, Nick. What's hey, up? Nick, what are you struggling with? Yeah, forget what's up. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, hey, that's bro. <laughs> bro, you, what, what are you struggling with? The question, the question for you, if you're on YouTube, I'm pointing at you, is, <laughs> and I'll calm down now, what are you struggling with? So that's the real question. And it's a, it's a current status kind of question that we're all struggling with something. Um, who would like to go first? I could jump in. Go for Great. it, Paul. Yeah. Um, I would say probably my biggest area is trusting God and trusting his plan and his timing and all of those kind of pieces that play in. I mean, part of it is that when you do have goals and you do have desires, um, and I've, I've always tried to just go for things, right? So if I, if I have an idea of what needs to happen, I just try to go make that thing happen doesn't always work, right? So you might run into an obstacle or just a, a curve in the road that you weren't expecting, those kinds of things. And and so for me, I find that some of those hiccups when when it seems like things are going in a direction and then it changes or when it, um, I'm trying to think of the right way to say it, but there's always going to be bumps and obstacles and all those kinds of things in the road. That's just inevitable because you don't see the whole road ahead of you. You just sure. see the next step. So but just trusting that God's actually ahead of me on the road and that he's l paving that path and leading me and helping me to maybe see some of those obstacles ahead of time. I mean, I, I would see that more, I think, now than maybe I have even just even just a week ago. But, I mean, it, it's still a struggle and it's something I keep taking to prayer and saying, all right, I, I got to remember that you are ultimately in charge, even though I have some goals and some ideas. Like, how how are you helping to unfold this or to draw my heart in the direction it needs to go versus maybe what I think it ought to be. I'm picturing your bump in the road analogy that you're the biker with your head down drafting, but you're like, uh, Hey God, where were you on that bump that I just ran into? Yeah. <laughs> you could have yelled, yelled it out. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, it, there are times, right. When it, it seems like maybe he could give more of an indication, but, but again, that's me wanting my that's way right. versus trying to really trust. The and bump could be good for us. Yeah. Mm, yeah that's a good amen. one. That's amen. a great one. Either one of you guys. Uh, yeah, I think, one of the things I'm struggling with is sticking to and coming back to daily prayer. Mm -hmm. um, I was really good at it there for a while as we all go, right? Life has these uh, peaks and valleys and roller coasters. And um, and it's great when, when it is great and you're loving it and you're like, oh, okay. And then things start going. And you're like, okay, I don't need, I don't need that anymore. <laughs> and you're like, wait a second. Now I'm feeling a little bit lost. Mm. The, the, the forest is getting a little darker. Yeah. Right. And it's just like, okay, got to dive back in, got to dive back in. Um, and just continuing to, to show up. Um, even when you feel busy, I think, right. I think that's, 
that's such an American ism, mm. right? This yeah. busyness. And we're often like, oh, my calendar's so full. Oh, busy. Like, here's yeah. a here's a Calendly link to save five minutes of emailing. Like, we, we try to save every last, and, and <laughs> yeah. I use it too. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's great. Yeah. And it does solve a problem. But like, we have to, we have to find, there's a business that shaves three minutes out of your day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. right. Well, you and I were doing a good job. I want to acknowledge this for a second of praying together because we work together in this startup of ours and we haven't been doing it lately. So yeah. I'm committing right now that mm. we'll be Amen. praying together again. So yeah. this hasn't been a, a terribly long spell, but yeah. we were doing it very, very well. And it was a part of what I always found to be uplifting for yeah. me. Actually, I'm, I'm going to jump off of that. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. The thing I'm struggling with is, um, so I left a very stable company that I started Five months ago, I started it 12 you years ago. <laughs> I left five yeah. months ago. <laughs> I'm not so that fast. So stable in wow. five months. Yeah. Like you wouldn't believe what I did. <laughs> so, could, you do that, could you do that again? <laughs> <laughs> Keep doing that. I don't know. So, uh, And what was interesting is if I reflect on where I am right now, I'm not being the father that I think I am in my head and in my heart, but my actions and my words are unbecoming of who I think I am as a father. And it's that if I really reflect, our new business, Undivided Life, is going well. But there's an instability because I don't even know exactly what it is and it doesn't have like the guarantee that my old company had and the part where I could kind of not show up if I wanted yeah. to. Mm. You know, I kind of have to show up and make sure that I'm not missing any pieces, that I'm being a good partner. Um, so it's funny, the the instability or the newness, the novelty has caused me to be more anxious, less patient. And um, there's times where it's despicable the way that I... Uh, I'm struggling with it the way that I'd snap at my kids and yeah. you know, kids need to be disciplined and we all can make mistakes, but I'm just off that center right now. And I, I need to get back. So. Wow. Well, thank you. All of you. I mean, just, I'm just going to say all three of yours I'm struggling with now. Um, <laughs> diddle, I, diddle. Yeah. Yep. I mean, seriously yep. though, yep. I, I mean, Paul, when you were talking uh, the same thing, I mean, these, I was like, Oh yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> um, so what I was prepared to say, and that's what I'll go back to since you guys did such a great job and I appreciate you sharing. Cause actually everyone needs to hear this. Like the right. listeners have to hear this stuff. We have to hear this practical, you know, uh, struggles because so for me, it's actually living intentionally as a father, right? That's what I was going to say. So, um, mm-hmm. I am a bit of a workaholic and when I'm not working, I'm thinking about work. And as such, yeah, I'm a professional trumpet player and we didn't go into that, but wow. I bonus show. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Bonus show. Yeah. You um, do that at the marketing firm. I uh, know. No, right. Just, Digital just before zoom calls, technology design, <laughs> trumpeting. just before zoom calls. Wait, uh, yeah. yeah every time you have a new idea, do you just blast That's it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, <laughs> We're going to let him share his struggles oh, yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> Before we heckle our guest. But he's I'm like glad. in an emotional state. We're like, <laughs> glad to be I am so sorry. No, it's hey, good. John, really that blows. <laughs> so I've got these incredible daughters, and they're 11 and 7, and both of them really want to be musicians, and they want to make music. And who better than to teach them than the guy who's got degrees in music and was professional for you know decades. And... And I haven't, you know, like I'll, I'll sit with them for once um, every two or three weeks and then I'll listen to them play the piano or or the ukulele my oldest is into. And um, and that's my primary vocation. That's right. And and that and every time. So I said something recently um, to my daughter. She was coming up to me and I was on my phone and she just kind of sat there while I was looking at my phone. And I t- stopped and looked at her and I said, Hey, sweetie, anytime you see me on my phone, I just want you to say, daddy, do you love me? Like, right. I want to, I want to have this, um, reminder. I need this oh, so desperately. And, uh, yeah, so that, that's what I've been struggling with a while. I actually gave up. I resigned about a year ago playing principal trumpet with the Richardson symphony orchestra right here to, to do that, to make more time for that. And I'd say that I'm failing. Uh, it's failing with more, exactly. And instead of that, which is most important. So, well, Thank you for sharing that, John. Uh, we'd love to support you in whatever you're struggling with and pray for all of you as well. Right now, we're going to do something really special to finish out the show, but we're going to encourage everybody to come back to the bonus show because I think there's a lot more that awesome. we want to peel back with you. But what we're going to do special, it's called Reverse Simpsons. We do every episode differently at the end. And uh, I just want to share this with you. Today's Reverse Simpsons is called The Bread of Wife Discourse. Okay. Okay. So the Bread of Wife Discourse is being brought to you by Jared Frank and the team at Wealth Coordination Partners. Mm. Jared actually submitted this idea to us <laughs> when we were in our second week of being yeah. a podcast. And so we lined up with him for this partnership. Jared's a financial advisor. He helps a bunch of clients navigate their personal finances, but he really wants to keep growing 
is help with fellow Catholic brothers and sisters. So please, if you're in the the neighborhood for a, uh, a financial planner or a wealth advisor, wealthcoordinationpartners.com. Jared, Frank, we love you, buddy. Mm. So the Bread of Wife Discourse is where each of our wives baked something for you. Oh. You were about to judge our wives on there. <laughs> How does that sit with you? Is this, this weird this, or what? This actually, I love this. I'm a celiac, though, so I probably oh, can't okay. have no, This is awesome. So we can, <laughs> we're going to all judge, judge our each wives. other. Yeah, we are reverse it. And, can, uh, can, I maybe, bread, bring bread back. can I maybe start off with something then? We'll, we'll yeah. do presentation, and I don't... You don't have to judge our presentation. We'll literally just judge each other's wives, which I love this. You yeah. could say cooking or baking yeah. or whatever. You don't. Nope. I don't know Shayla, but yeah. here we go. I'm going to judge her. I want to point out that my wife wrote you a letter and she oh. wrote Paul, Besner, and Jeff because what she made is PB and J cookies. They're really I bet good. they are. Okay, I need you to open this letter. She yeah. literally didn't let me read it. So okay. um, we're going to pass these out to the guys. Um, it wasn't always a celiac. I remember. You can you can recall. Can do you want to smell it? Great, I did. <laughs> that goes over yeah, really yeah, well yeah, on a goes, podcast. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to <laughs> smell it? <laughs> Anybody listening by audio? Push the boundaries. In. All right, PB and J cookies. Inherited delicious flavor. Inherently has nuts. <laughs> 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 so the joke wow. here. Let me uh, see. That's this. great. Yeah. Inherited delicious flavor. So it's inherited. <laughs> Inherently has nuts because it's made with a nut flour. Inherited. So she put inherit and inherent because yeah, I love it. her husband doesn't know the difference between those two <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How was the cookie for you? This is, this is very good. It's uh, one of my Amanda favorites. All right. What do you got for us, Nicholas? You're going to eat. Oh, you're eating the cookie. You're eating I'm Amanda's about cookie. Yours. Amanda's? That's pretty good. I can't believe we picked this for you. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think this through. <laughs> Next we forgot to put that in the show, <laughs> que- the, yeah, prep the prep question. What uh, allergies do you it have? Did, it did run through my brain like, I could put it in my mouth and then spit it out. Like, we could pause <laughs> no, it. But. No, no. <laughs> no, that would be an incredible podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what are we so eating here? My wife got, uh, I'll call her her famous, or it's her best friend who has a little mm. bakery um, recipe, uh, Bear Bakery in Dallas, Texas. Um, mm-hmm. These are s'mores cookies. Oh. It's got graham oh. cracker into the cookie crust. They're the bomb. This is like Campfire Christmas right here. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. really, really good. Man, this is suffering. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this, what are you struggling with right now? Yeah. These exactly. jack wagons. <laughs> <laughs> eating everything in front of me. I actually have extra, uh, too. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be the third round of cookies. Yeah, we all made cookies. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. My wives are like, we're not going to try too hard. Unplanned. <laughs> I mean, they tried right. very hard. Yeah, yeah. No, no, all no. of them <laughs> very, very hard. Ditto. Ditto. Cookies. Ditto. Shush. Ditto. Ditto. Edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to delete that <laughs> What do, you um, so what, do you, these, what do you got here, Paul? These are a, a famous recipe. In fact, it's it's an old recipe, a French recipe from, um, yeah, it goes all the way back to Marseille, France. And so it's a, a a famous chef, well, chef and baker, and um, his name is Nesle Toulouse. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's got some great brand. Yeah, right? That's and uh, the translation in English is uh, Nestle Tollhouse. And... Um, no, but she made the, these are uh, her special recipe. She throws in cinnamon and all kinds of good They're stuff. They're wonderful. So, yeah. This and is, the way she bakes them, too. I want to encourage both of your wives that if they ever burn cookies to give them to me because I'm, so, I'm one of those guys who loves the flavor Burn. burnt. Mm. <laughs> it's man, <Interesting>. manly. Manly. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Simpsons, <laughs> tastes like burning. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ralph Wiggum. Ralph, yeah. <laughs> Are you my dad? <laughs> <laughs> I came back for a second bite on the PB and J with more J. Oh yeah, it, you gotta get get some J. In I there. had a little bit on the first bite, but it really elevated it with the second. <sighs> mm. I mean, how random though that she was like, "You guys have PB and J on the show," and I was like, "What?" Paul Besner and Jeff. How does she always do that? She finds like these random connections that none of us notice at All any right. point. We're about to have to roll, but I'm gonna tell you real quick. We're gonna be back with the bonus with our good buddy John. And uh, check out thecatholicgentleman.com. And in the meantime, we'll see you in the Eucharist. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to join us at our undersized table, subscribe to the video version of the show on YouTube by typing at, that's the symbol at, so shift and two on your keyboard, at the underscore Beatitudes on YouTube. We'll see you there. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.